Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to Caring Medical Florida. A common condition that people come in with is spinal stenosis. All spinal stenosis means is that the spinal canal is basically less than a centimeter in uh, width. And spinal stenosis traditionally has been caused by degenerative arthritis. And then when I was a medical student some 30 years ago, I mean everybody was getting surgery for spinal stenosis and the treatment was called a laminectomy. You know, in other words, they would remove some of the bone, now the spinal cord has a lot of room. And what they found was when they removed that bone, the people then years later got instability. So they had symptoms that were sometimes worse than the original symptoms. So surgeons are a lot more uh, careful in who they do surgery for. The current treatment by traditional medicine is actually called decompressive fusion, a decompression where they make sure that the spinal cord has plenty of room and then they open it up and then they fuse uh, the vertebrae together. Because they have to do a fusion with it, it kind of gives us an indication that the cause of spinal stenosis is actually instability, it's instability. How we determine in the office who needs surgery and who would respond to prolotherapy, a lot of it is symptoms. And a common symptom that a person has with spinal stenosis is that when they sit down, they don't have any back pain or little back pain and no leg pain. But when they stand for a certain period of time or they walk like, a block or something, they get this horrific back pain with leg pain, like their legs are so heavy, like they're just so heavy, and then they have to sit down and the symptoms go away. Well, the heaviness is the nerve impulses aren't going to the muscles. The nerve impulses aren't going to the muscles. Your muscles only have power if the nerve impulses go there. But because the person's symptoms are positional, or related to some kind of activity and they're totally relieved by sitting, you know that the problem is an instability problem. It's a ligament problem. And just to illustrate this, so let's imagine that you have this amount of space and you have the nerve going through it. Well, when the person is sitting down, the nerve has plenty of room, but when they're standing, the space is narrow. The space is narrow when they're standing or they're walking, and now all of a sudden there's compression of a nerve or the spinal cord, and then nerve impulses don't go through. Then you get all kinds of pain, and you get weakness where you can't walk so much and the pain's so bad that then you have to then sit down and the space opens up. We call that dynamic spinal instability or dynamic spinal stenosis. Because you have to remember if somebody has a bone spur or the space is just narrowed by degenerative arthritis, it's the, the, the disc problem, the degenerated disc, the bone spurs are there all the time. They're all there all the time. So a person who has leg pain all the time, like they have it all the time, they sit down, they have it, they lay down, they have it, well that's going to be a case where I would call it the static spinal stenosis, and those are the cases that need a decompressive uh, surgery. They might need a cervic or cervical or lumbar fusion. But a person whose symptoms only occur with standing, so when they're standing, the space narrows, or when they're walking, the space narrows, that's a ligament problem, that's a connection problem. That responds very, very good to prolotherapy. Now sometimes we have to do nerve regeneration with it. So if there's a person who has some lingering symptoms, like they might say, no, when I sit down, the symptoms are much, much better, but they don't go away completely. Well, to me, that means that there's a part of the nerve that's actually injured a little bit. So the bone, the bone can press against the nerve. And when the outside of the nerve the, the sheath that surrounds the nerve gets damaged, you can get a nummy feeling or a burning pain. 
So the more that symptom lingers, the more we have to do nerve regeneration. And how we do nerve regeneration is we inject cells, whether it's platelet-rich plasma or bone marrow cells onto the nerve to stimulate repair of the nerve. And normally we do that by ultrasound guidance. We document a spinal stenosis by digital motion x-ray. And what we find in cases of dynamic cervical uh, stenosis is that the spinal canal narrows with extension. Uh, and of course, we know for the lumbar spine, it's the same thing, that the spinal canal narrows excessively with extension in dynamic spinal stenosis. The good news is by a series of prolotherapy treatments, the instability resolves and thus the spinal canal stays open longer with standing and walking. It normally is a series of treatments, and again, depends on the extensiveness of the case. It can be anywhere from four visits to 10 visits, because some of the cases, they come in, they're, they're just very, very advanced. So uh, that's why it takes so many visits. We normally see the person about once a month, and then really severe cases where there actually is already some nerve damage, we do nerve regeneration with platelet-rich plasma or bone marrow. And it, that doesn't need to necessarily have to be done every time, but what the patients find is that after two or three of those visits, they start getting less and less symptoms at rest, that the burny feeling goes away, the numbness, um, goes away and what's really encouraging to them is that they then can build muscular power because that's what a lot of the people have is just they feel so weak. Once a person gets prolotherapy, their neck gets stabilized by prolotherapy instead of getting uh, no motion with spinal fusion, right? Spinal fusions would cause no motion. Prolotherapy restores the, the normal motion and once that happens, the muscles relax, the pain goes away, their activity level increases, they're able to walk further, and they're happy, and that makes me really happy.